the third annual Let's Not Smoke celebration. Such a bright infernal fire 
The ashes of ages cannot turn its tinder to grayness, its sparkling tinder, which so pale blue glistens in its stillness. So there is something that is mild and wild and precious, and thanks to Gary Berman and all the wonderful musical and organizational work that both he and Beth have done, I think you're in for a, a very special evening. So the song that Susan just sang, I'm sure most of you know it. If you don't know all the words, you sure, certainly know the Tumala, Tumala Life of it. And the amazing thing that I found out is that this song was not published until 1940. And I don't really know if that means that it wasn't sung until then, or just it was sung for a long time and then somebody collected it. But it's really impossible to think that my grandparents didn't sing that song um, for much of their lives. You know, you just figure that it's one of those things that was always there. Uh, so it's rather interesting. And that's an example of what we call a riddle song, where the boy, he wants to see if the girl is suitable for him, and so he has these riddles for her, and if she can answer them, then she is worthy of becoming his wife. Um, lucky her. Um, and there are other ones that we don't necessarily, that we, uh, that we didn't sing, but it, it's one of these songs that exists in, in many versions and variants. Uh, just to say, and it's amazing, I found all this on Wikipedia. You don't really need a Yiddish scholar standing here. You just need somebody who can look up at Wikipedia. But what I found was that the song was also used in the play Angels in America uh, by Tony Kushner. And it's sung by the guest, the ghost of Ethel Rosenberg to Roy Cohn, who's dying of AIDS. So I'll have to go see that play again. And I mentioned, or the poet mentioned, renewal. So how's this? The metal, the heavy metal version of this song is included in the first metal Yiddish album. Called <laughs> Alan Bates by Gibalt, released in March 2011. So as we say, as we have left, de left men, if you live long enough, you live to see all kinds of things. So we now have Yiddish heavy metal as well, although I don't think that's to Gary's taste. So. <laughs> although maybe, he doesn't know about it. So the next song is called Lucy Shefelda on Russian Fields, and it is going to be sung by Lori Siegel, and I think this is her Yiddish debut, right? Or certainly not her debut debut. You might have heard her in some of the Gilbert and Sullivan uh, productions. Um, and I think most of us have this idea that Jews in Eastern Europe all lived in these shtetlach, in these towns, in these kind of vibrant communities. But some people didn't. They actually kind of lived very isolated, like Tevye, as a matter of fact. It's not like it is on the other end of And this song tells of the loneliness of living out in the middle of nowhere on the Russian fields. And it says, on Russian, in Russian fields, where can one be lonelier? Where can one be lonelier? And I'd just like to tell you a little bit about the writer and the composer, because I think they're very important. Uh, this song was written by Dovi Kopstein, a Yiddish poet who was born near Kiev in 1889 and died in 1952. And keep that date in your mind. He was a leader in Jewish cultural affairs uh, during the revolutionary years, and he actually protested the suppression of Hebrew in the former Soviet Union. In 1923, he left Russia for Germany, and then he went to Palestine, where he hoped to settle. Uh, but Palestine was not a great place for a Yiddish writer to make a living. Uh, so for that reason, and also because he had two sons left in the Soviet Union, and interestingly, their names were Hillel and Shammai. Um, that's really true. And they were getting taunted at school uh, for having a father living in Palestine. So for all these reasons, he came back to Russia, where he um, made a career for himself as a Yiddish writer. And it's just one thing I have to tell you about Russia. As many horrible things as we know about and what was done to Yiddish culture, if you were considered a writer, and this is something that you got this status if you published a book or two books, I can't remember, then you were given a salary as a writer. 
and you could live in a writer's house. You were given an apartment. So that it was a good place in many ways for Yiddish writers to be, because in what other country is a writer given a salary? Um, so he went back, and even though he tried to live as a dutiful Soviet citizen, nonetheless he was one of five poets who was killed on one day, along with another seven leading Jewish cultural figures and general Jewish scientists and whatnot, who were all killed on August 12, 1952, by Stalin. Um, so this is an important date, an often forgotten date, in Jewish history. Um, and this year it was 60 years of that um, sad anniversary, so Gary decided to include a few songs by Soviet Yiddish writers, and this is one of them. The music is by Emil Gorovitz. Any of you remember Emil Gorovitz? He just, um, he was born in 1923. If you lived in New York, you might have had a chance to hear him. He actually had a nightclub for a while called the Malalaika. Um, he died in, 20, in 2001, and he was an immensely popular singer in Russian. And in 1916, he actually won the all-union competition for the best entertainer in the Soviet Union. He also sang in Yiddish, and this was an amazing thing at that time in the Soviet, in the Soviet Union. He really sang in Yiddish when very few other people had the nerve to do so. However, in the early 1970s, the Jewish song repertoire on the Soviet radio and television came under a kind of unofficial ban, and so that meant that he was banned simply because he was a Jew, not just his Yiddish things, but anything he sang. So it became really impossible for him to live in the former Soviet Union. He emigrated to Israel, and then ultimately he came uh, to New York. And he put out an album, I don't know if it's available in CD or not, and I have the actual album called If Bin Ayin, I Am a Jew, uh, which has many songs written by Soviet Yiddish poets for which he did the musical settings. So 